Hello, I have made a few videos about judgments, well not judgment, subjectivity, maybe not even that, but manipulation, maybe that's the best word that you can make when you financing with debt to capital ratios, when the debt to capital ratio drives the financing. You can add development fees, you can add profits on the APC cost, you can uh, add IDC on interest during construction, that is, on shareholders' equity. You can, all these things increase the cost of the project, but don't uh, cost any money. Okay, development fees is an interesting and separate issue. Uh, valuation of land, allocation of the CEO's salary, all these things, you know, owner's costs, all these things can affect the cost of the project and influence the amount of debt. But what about forecast? What about when the debt to, when the DSCR is a constraint? Well, I'm going to use a wind example for this. And to do this, I'm going to go through P50s and P90s and all of that sort of thing. Now, um, here's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to begin, and I'm going to have to split this into a couple of videos. I don't know you've seen that kind of hint of where I'm going, perhaps. I'm going to start with a, a, a file. Now, uh, I hope this wind uh, page is going to change a lot. Soon, and if you don't uh, work with wind, that has nothing to do with this. This is an example of judgments in a forecast and how negotiating. I heard somebody wonderfully said, Ah, it's the negotiated base case. How, how coming up with a forecast is not some, you know, thing you get from kind of consultants or something that's cast in stone, but there's some extremely soft areas. Now, there's a file I put on the website called this FPL standard. Of course, it's an extremely old file. Uh, if you get the Google Drive, it's in the, the thing for uh, renewable energy and in renewable energy. There's a page called, um, a file, or a folder rather called financial analyst reports and in that financial re analysis reports there's something called this this uh, uh, it's an old credit report and it, the nice thing about it it has a whole bunch of different forecasts and it goes through this issue of what's a one year P90 and P75 versus what's a 10 year P90 and 75 and frankly the way it was written, <laughs> I think this is a horrible thing to try to explain to people. And I'm going to try to explain it in a somewhat reasonable way, but I'm going to probably have problems. I can just imagine you <clears throat> going to some credit officer who has to review all sorts of different credits in different industries and everything else. And you go and say, well, the 10-year P90 has a 1.2 times coverage, but the one-year P90 has a 1.1 times coverage, and the one-year P99 has a 1.0 times coverage ratio. I mean, try to explain that. Whereas, you know, what's a P... The P50 and P90 is hard enough, but the rest of this... So, so this has got some good data. So here's what I do. I'll just copy this. Now, when you copy this, you've got this, ah, this horrible format that just drives me crazy. It used to, at least. This is where it's all in kind of one thing. Now, if I press Shift-Control-A, whoops, I, <laughs> I didn't have it. So we've got a, this is the read PDF to Excel file, okay? Shift-Control-A. Now, uh, you uh, click on this one and then put reformat. And then it reformats it for you. And if you copy, whoops, let's just get the titles right here. I hope 
this works. Copy and can you put edit paste special as transpose? No, you can't. So you have to uh, insert one, I guess. Okay, so this is the site. Control C. I always have. I cannot seem to figure out a consistent way to manage these uh, titles. I'm sorry about that. So. Now, the nice thing about this thing is that um, we have this data, whether it's good data or crap data. It's data for different sites, and we can start to really get it underneath this data. And um, let's see this. Okay, the P50 is always the same. These are, doesn't really say what they are, they're production of wind. So we have these various, uh, you know, forecasts, okay? Um, so we have the, uh, and what, what we'll do is really look at some of the different ones. And then they put this variation between the P50 and the P90 and then the P10. Now, all, the only thing is important to look at right now is understand about three things. First of all, the P50 for all the projects is the same, and it's, of course, the same as the average. I say, of course, in a bad way, but that's what it is. P50 is the average. Now, for one year... If we look at the one year P95 and the 10 year P95, notice that the one year is smaller. It has a bigger variation than the 10 year. And in fact, they say they put the variation of the one year to the 10 year. And we'll look at some of that in just a minute. Okay? Well, we might look at it in a different uh, video actually okay so that's the a little bit of background on this now you know understanding what's really in this one year which has a higher variation than the 10 year and then dissecting this um, and finally using this uh, to size the debt to size the debt is where I'm going and originally I thought, oh, maybe I'll just make one nice little video of this. But unfortunately, I think it's really uh, going to have to be split up just a little to understand what it means. Now, what I'm going to try to do now is demonstrate uh, something. The first thing to demonstrate is that if you have an expected production, so this is like this, expected production of 333, okay? If you have an expected production, and if you know the standard deviation, this is from just the wind changes that go up uh, up and down each year. And this is the total standard deviation from all these permanent P-E-R-M-E-N-A-T factors. These are, I don't want to go through the wake effect, the wind shear effect, the errors from the correlations, the, the, the icing of the blades if you're in Ghana, not really, but the, the uh, um, problems with power curves for perhaps, although they're supposed to be uh, guaranteed, the, the uh, what else? I mean, there, there are other things. Um, uh, I mean, oh, oh, the uh, 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 oh God, I can't. Uh, the, the, the up and down, uh, the, 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 whatever. The, okay. Um, I can't get it right now. Okay, and then so now, if you combine two variations, and if they're independent, only if they're independent, what you can do is you can square the standard deviation, 
And after you square the standard deviation, you sum it, and then you take the square root of that sum. That's called mean squared error. And it, I don't know, I can't really remember it from uh, uh, statistics classes, but it's, it works. <laughs> I will do a simulation kind of de to demonstrate it works. Obviously, if you added these two together, you'd get 22, and the mean squared error is 15. It's a lot lower because there's offset in one standard deviation from the other and all that. Now, if we did a, if we used this and we wanted to get a, let's put a P, uh, how about a P50? Okay. And if we put a P50, you use this wonderful thing called norm inverse. And you put in a probability, 50%. Okay, and when you do that, N-O-R-M-I-N-V, you put in the 50%. Let's put in F4. And then you put in the mean, F4. And then let's put in the standard deviation. And you get 100. <laughs> And you get 100 for all of them, because that's supposed to be what happens, is that there's, if there's, you know, the, this kind of, is without standard deviation. But if we put in, the, let's put in the P75, and maybe the P90, and the P95, and the P99, okay? All right, and then we... Uh, okay, I'm going to center those. How about I'll center that, too? Now, what you do here is to get this, you put 25%, you know, it's kind of 1 minus, and then you put 10%, 5%, and 1%. This, if you put norm inverse, what it does, it gives you the value, that, you know, uh, Crap. Uh, we'll put the probability in here. Let's press this just like this. And then we'll put in the, the mean, which is always this. And then the standard deviation. Okay, now, then what this does is it gives you this 89. Let's look at this 89. This is, uh, you are... You've got a 75% chance of being okay, but a 25% chance of being wrong. If we put just norm distribution, I guess that will do. If you just say, take this, this value, and then take this mean, and take this standard deviation, and then put a 1 for cumulative, it gives you the 25%. This is the 25% probability if you draw a little normal distribution and all that. Now, uh, I should have put the dollar sign here, shouldn't I? Okay, so the nice thing about this is that's just, you can compute all of these things very quickly. Now, here is the issue, okay? What happens is I pretend these, this is just from the up and down in the wind. This is from all these permanent, per, oh shit, I can't, permanent, oh. Uh, oh shit. Okay, uh, factors, okay. Now, the, the, um, uh, uh, this is nothing. This is the P1 year, and this is the P10 year, all right? This is the confusing part. This thing just from the wind changes is not in the P1 year or 10 year. The P10 year only has the wind changes, 
the P1 year has everything put together. The P1 year, just like I showed you just before, we just looked at that wonderful little thing, the P1 year has a bigger variation here, the P95 versus the, the 10 year. This is the, this is the one year. This is the 10 year. I don't know if we really need these things. Shift space bar, shift alternate, uh, uh, right arrow. Okay, shift space bar, shift alternate, right arrow. We'll talk about those things just a little bit later, just so you really see kind of what's uh, uh, driving things. Okay, this is, I'll call this the FPL example. There, got some other name. Uh, no, okay. Um, now, the, the, um, how much that bugs me there. This, this up and down stuff, this, what, what do they call this? Oh my god. Now, okay, the, the, um, I'm embarrassing myself a lot, okay? But that's the P1 year and the P90. Now, if you had to explain this, here's what I did. It's not that important, but I just put a random number in here. And then we put norm inverse on this random number, and this gives you the up and down. I'll just press the F11 for, for a minute. This gives you the up and down.